So, hello everyone. My name is um, Jean-Philippe Evrard. I'm the current PTL of OpenStack Ansible. My IRC nickname is Evrard JP, if you want to contact me later. Um, generally, because it's sometimes hard to type EVR tab, does the work. Um, the, the goal of this presentation is to help you become familiar with OpenStack Ansible and informing you on what we are doing, but also how you could help. Oh, okay, there we go. And we have a screen. Does anyone know a good URL shortener? No, no, no. If you hang it, we don't hang out, it's connected. Is it open in for it? Uh, yeah. Password? No. There's Wi Fi. Yeah. Go, go, just talk. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you want to see the presentation, I can share you a link. Um, in the meantime, we'll have to do without. Um, it's going to be a little harder for, the, for showing you the, the stats and everything. Um, but what I can do is start a presenter mode. Uh, open stack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then open infra is the password. Yeah, that's right. It's just capital O, capital I. Mm -hmm. So you can go to um, goo.gl slash slides, slash 6662 uh, UN. And technically, it should bring you to the presentation. Um, could you try that? In the meantime, um, so in this presentation, I will answer the following questions. What is OpenStack Ansible, named OSA? Um, what's the target audience? What does the community look like and how has it evolved over time? What did OpenStack do? What did OpenStack Ansible do recently? What are our plans for the future? And how can I help? Sorry, it sounds very interesting. <laughs> cool. So that's all I'll go on the right. It's a uh, Cape Buffalo. Um, and it's already seven minutes past. Okay, so um, because, OpenStack, because OpenStack projects have fancy names, uh, you have to play a game of what does this project do? Our project does not have a fancy name. Sorry. So instead, I made you this. Um, oh, if you see the answer, that's, that's all. So OpenStack Ansible is a way to install OpenStack with Ansible on containers or on bare metal. So who is it meant for? We mainly have three classes of people, the cloud deployers and operators. They use OSA to build a cloud for the users. They tailor made it for their customer needs or their internal IT needs. For example, we have people from ISPs, retail companies, I will not name them, but if you want, I can tell you after the presentation. Another category is, um, are, um, is companies creating products to deploy OpenStack. An example is Rackspace with its Rackspace private cloud or OpenX, OpenX private cloud. If you want to know more about those, um, come talk to me after the presentation. The last category is upstream developers. Whether you are building a new storage solution, or working on OpenStack upstream, working on the new upstream code that is completely not OpenStack, like some SDN networking solution. Uh, OpenStack Ansible can help. We've built environments to help upstream OpenStack developers like Dragonflow, Translations, Keystone, OPNFV developers, and the list can go on. The important thing to keep in mind is that you're not alone. There are maybe more categories I didn't think of, um, but please tell me about it. It's, it's not the five club. You can actually tell me about it. Um, in all these cases, don't hesitate to help others by uh, sharing your experience in your domain. That's how our community grows. So talking about contributions, 
Um, sorry, I don't have staff for Juno and Kilo. Um, but Newton was a pretty big cycle. Uh, Okada and Pike were shorter cycles, so we don't have that much comet, which is still, which is still total 4,000 comet. Um, Queens um, got a slow start, uh, but Rocky right now has one, already 1,000 comets. And um, if we continue at the same rhythm, uh, we can reach uh, 3,300 uh, comets. That's completely projections, that's completely imaginative, but it would be great if we reached that. So, for your information, I, um, for, this, for this slide, I took the, um, um, in Stack Analytics, the first eight uh, contributors, uh, company contributors per cycle. And I put that into a large table. And what you can see is that there are 21 different companies that made it into the top eight. Uh, top eight, sorry. Um, so companies come and go with the width of, and the color of the bar changing. Uh, for comets, Rackspace is still the main contributor. It's not changing much over the last cycle. But any company can help so that we can reach more diversity. In terms of reviews, same process. Um, and we, as you can see on Rocky, we are, um, we are close to reaching the diversity goal to be considered diverse for the, ta for the tag diverse affiliation in the TC, which is, which is very good. We should continue that way. Independents have a large place to play. So come explain your use case and review um, and help on the review and review with your use case in mind. Still about the community health, uh, talking about contributors and core developers. Um, we have new cores in roles that are subject matter experts in the fields, but globally involved cores have sadly reduced. We only got one new core recently, and we've lost two. So how can you help? It's simply by being active. We'll, we'll, we'll see you. In terms of commits, Generally, each cycle we have around 100, uh, sorry, committers. Um, every cycle we have around 100 unique committers. Uh, but this cycle, uh, we are around 68 uh, committers, unique committers. And I would like this, to, this number to go higher up. That would, be, that would be very cool. So how to fix that? That's easy. Propose patches, don't hesitate. Um, for contributors activity, it's always the same, the same group of 10, 15 people that are active weekly, and the same 25, 35 people active monthly. So please join us. Let's revert that downward trend that we are seeing on, the, on, the, on, on this slide. <coughs> so I, I guess that you, I'm showing you the community, act, uh, the community health. Uh, Last, last thing I'm talking about um, community health is bugs, and then we can go on with uh, what we did and what's the future. So um, the, um, for the next question is, are we piling bugs under our beds? So the, the answer is no. We manage them, but we should, in my opinion, have a better resolution rate. And um, the resolution ratio is around 30%, at, and for me, we, we could improve that. Um, but please file more bugs, because as you can see, the number of bugs in Rocky is low. And uh, maybe we are very good and we don't have bugs anymore, but um, I would pretty much see bugs and, and fixes. So, um, so thank you already. So now that we've covered uh, community health, we can talk about what we did and what we're working on. So we changed our testing in uh, Queens, moving to Zool V3 has increased our agility to modify tests and adding scenarios. We've introduced gate jobs for bare metal testing, increased the amount of scenarios. We've refactored docs to be more like a wizard, holding your hand from your use case uh, from zero to hero. Um, even the contribution or, opera or operations guide are now written in a, in a crescendo manner so you can just follow it, and it's a story. We've laid out the groundwork for bringing new container systems. We've upgraded to Ansible 2.4. 
and we've separated install and config tags for easier artifacting if you have an artifacting host. <coughs> we've reduced the amount of containers moving away from microservices like uh, deployment to a more consolidated view for operations. That's something that it's not generally the popular trend, but that's what our operations prefer at the end because we want a solution that works for operators. Among the change there, we've moved neutron agents to bare metal. And it's still to, uh, to help uh, our operational teams. And it effectively reduced downtimes in some cases like upgrades. And SUSE support has been worked on. So for Rocky, we'll introduce Bionic. So please contact me um, if you want to help. There is also a massive work started by Marcos to install with distribution package instead of sources. I see that I will just accelerate a little. Sorry if my raise of mind. Uh, anyway. Um, so um, thanks, Marcos, for the, for the package's work. We are all working on the, on the reduction of variables to make it faster to deploy. Albert has done quite a few patches on this. So thanks, Albert. For the upgrades, the, we, are, uh, we are working on the upgrade of, uh, of Ansible to 2.5. Still ongoing. Um, Jimmy is working on that, so uh, you are free to help. We also have new functional roles like Panko, Mazakari, Congress, and Blazor. Systemd and Spawn was introduced in Rocky, and people are encouraged to test it and, uh, and improve it. Thanks, Kevin, just here, to, uh, for the work there. Last, I'm looking for people willing to step into the world of inventory changes. It's not hard, but I like more eyes on my work. Please contact me. Be sure to contact me if you have specific inventory needs. Internationalization of our project is on the table too. Uh, all the ISC nicknames you see are the people active on those topics. Please join our ISC channel, talk with all of us, uh, mention the appropriate people if you want to help. Still for Rocky, um, if you're a role developer, here is what you'd like to know. We are cleaning up the roles, uh, simplifying the playbooks, reducing repetitions. We are, for example, including DB creation, RabbitMQ uh, queues creation uh, in the roles. We have packages, um, we have packaged a series of tasks into system D configuration as role. So this way, if you are not using OpenStack Ansible, if you are simply using Ansible, you can still use these roles for system D service management, for mount points, for network configuration, and for many other things. Another example of packaging is Ansible config template. Ansible config template is now packaged <coughs> externally. So you can use it in your roles or playbooks without the need of getting all our OpenStack Ansible plugins. So you can use config template anywhere easily. We are refactoring tests to reduce duplications. The repo build, if you know repo build, uh, it will go away, making, your, making the role development and integrated dev easier. The developer mode will be simplified, and the Python build will be a separate role that will be called. Roles will require adapting, so help is welcome. So for Stein and above, we'll work on the um, addition of new distributions, like CentOS 8, a uh, new version of SUSE. The role testing may well be refactored now that Molecule has changed. I don't know if you know Molecule, you should have a look. Um, I'm more thinking, uh, I'm more and more thinking that we should be using test infra and Molecule supports it. And we still want to help on the offline story. We, with all the work we've done in the last three cycles for getting there, we might as well reach an easy offline install in time. Last but not least, making Python 3 the default stack everywhere is something I'd like, we, I would like to see achieve. Your help is wanted there. Okay, so the... Um, probably messed up with the slide, sorry. <laughs> um, so, how to give feedback? Um, please join us. Um, explain what's going well for you, what's going not well for you in the feedback session tomorrow at 9.50 uh, a.m. Sorry if it's early in the morning. Um, it will be early in the morning for me at least. Uh, talk to us in the hallway track. Um, talk, on, talk to us on ISC, on the OpenStack Ansible on Freenode. Uh, on the mailing list, uh, just add OpenStack Ansible in the topic name. If you want to know how to contribute, uh, we have a project onboarding session. 
uh, today, 4.20, um, and basically the docks, like, like I said earlier, is it's pretty good. And, and now it's, uh, I guess I will not have the time for Q&A, so I would like to say thank you. And um, just for the, just for uh, the last slide, that was free if I had time during Q&A, that was the generic view of the OpenStack Ansible community. So there are, there are places where are going better, there are things where are staying or doing bad, and your help is welcomed. So don't hesitate to help us here. Really, thank you for your time.